Hello and welcome back to PHP Basics. My name is Sean. A while back I made a video on how to create a drop down menu with options that were populated from a database. Since then I've received a lot of inquiries on how to create subsequent drop down menus based on the selection of the previous. You might see this when you're searching for a used vehicle online like this example here. I'm on cars.com and we can see that we can choose from makes and we can choose from models, which by default nothing populates under models because we haven't selected anything for a make. So if I choose Cadillac, then instantly the drop down menu changes to different models of Cadillacs and the same thing happens if I choose Chevrolet. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do today using PHP, jQuery, and that scary little thing called Ajax or asynchronous JavaScript and XML HTTP request. But it's not that scary, I promise. Let's go ahead and get started. So to start, let's take a look at the structure of the database. I have a database called cars and inside of cars, I have two tables. One is makes and one is models. Looking in the makes table, I have an ID make, which is the primary key. And then I also have the name of the manufacturer or the make. So in this example, I have Ford, Chevrolet, and Hyundai. The make ID is important in this case because we're creating a relational database, and this is the primary key of this table, and we'll use that as the foreign key in models. So if we look, we have F-150, Mustang, Fusion, Festiva, that all have a make ID of one. And if we look back at makes, well, Ford has the make ID of one. So anything with the make ID of one is going to be associated with Ford. And that would be the same corresponding values for the other names as well. So let's go ahead and jump into our code. So I've taken the liberty to go ahead and set up some sort of a template to save us a little bit of time, specifying the document type, putting in our standard HTML head and body tags, but I'm also including the CDN from Google for jQuery. And you can simply search Google jQuery, click on the first link and copy this little snippet of code and paste it in your head tag. I've also created a couple selectors. One is makes and then one is models. And these will act as placeholders for the values that we're ultimately going to populate inside of those selectors. But if we look at our page, currently it looks something like this with no options. Before we can do any of this, we have to make sure that the page is even loaded. So I'm going to create a new script tag and close it using dollar sign and then document dot ready, meaning the page is ready. We're going to create a function and inside of this function, everything else is going to happen. Okay, so just to make sure this works, I'll say alert. And whenever I refresh the page, we should see an alert. And that means that everything is working correctly. All right. So remember whenever I said that we had to submit a form that doesn't even exist? Well, we're using the Ajax shorthand post method, which posts a form as something triggers it. So if you're pressing down on a key or if you hover over something, we can trigger an event that processes a form using Ajax. That's what it's there for. Uh, typically, when you submit a form, you've put in a username and a password or email address or something that gets submitted to the server and it displays some data back. Well, since there's no button to submit, we're going to do it as soon as the page happens, but we need something to send it. So I'm going to create a variable. We'll just call it get makes and it's simply going to equal true. That means it exists. It doesn't contain any data, but we can use that to say, hey, if this is set, then perform this code. The magic behind this is dollar sign dot post, which like I said before, is the shorthand for the Ajax post method. It requires three properties. The first one is PHP page that's going to be doing all the work. The second is going to be the variable that we're passing through, which is get makes. And then the third one is what happens when the data comes back. We're going to create a function and inside of this, we're going to change the value of the makes. Now, like I said, that comes back as JSON. So I'm just going to create a variable called data. It's going to send this to the PHP page and return it back as data. All right. So from here, all we have to do is reference the form ID or the, the um, selector ID, which is makes. And we're going to change the HTML of that to whatever was populated in data. So to show an example of this, let's take a look at our PHP page. I've already connected to the database. I've got a variable called DB. It's instantiating a new PDO. The driver is MySQL. The host name is localhost. The DB name is cars. And then the second and third attributes for this are the username and password. 
The rest of this is basically like submitting a typical form. We'll say if is set the post value of get makes, and then everything that happens here is going to be displayed back on the original page. So I could simply say echo option test, close that option and refresh my page. So it looks like I forgot to reference the actual ID, which is represented by the hashtag there. So let's go ahead and refresh this. And we can see now that it says test. So all we have to do now is query the database for the actual uh, data that we're looking for. So I'll create a variable called get makes, and that's going to equal uh, db prepare. And I'm simply going to say select all from makes, and then get makes execute. And then we'll create a while loop like we typically would. We'll say while rows equals get makes fetch. And then we'll grab the uh, ID. We'll say that equals rows ID. Actually, is it ID or is it ID makes? It's ID make. And we'll just make this say the same thing. And then we'll also have the name. And that's going to equal rows name. From there, all we have to do is echo option. And the value is going to equal the ID of the make. And then we're going to display the name. And when we refresh the page, it should show our makes right here. Now it's automatically defaulting to Ford, I believe. So what I'll do is above that, I'm just going to go option select make. All right, so now whenever I refresh, it should show select make and then everything else happens underneath that. So now let's start working on selecting the model. So when populating our makes, we didn't really have anything to go off of. We just loaded them when the page was loaded. However, now we need to make sure that we're querying our database based on the selection from this makes dropdown. Okay, so what I'll do here is I'll say dollar sign dot makes dot on change. So whenever this value changes, it's going to perform a function. Or like we had above, I can actually just kind of copy and paste this below and change the properties as we need to. So, all right, so we're still using the backend PHP. We're actually going to send whatever the value was of make. So let's create a new variable. Let's say var um, make is going to equal this dot value. So don't get confused between make and makes. First, we are populating the makes selector. Whenever it has changed, we're now selecting that particular make, and that's what I'm going to send back. All right, so now we'll just say make, and whatever comes back is going to change the models dropdown. All right, so let's jump back in here. So now we have a variable called make. I'm going to say if is set the post value of make, then perform some function. And we can really do the exact same thing that we did before. So I'm gonna copy and paste this code. Only well, instead of get makes, we're going to change makes to models. So within the selection, I'm gonna change makes to models. And in my query, I'm just going to say, select all for models where make ID is equal to question mark. And then inside of the execute, we can specify whatever that value was, which is create a variable for that. We'll just say models, or I'm sorry, make is going to equal the post value of make. And then we'll pass that through as a variable here. Okay, so whenever we click on one of those options, meaning that the value has changed, we're going to grab that value and we're going to create a variable called make. We're then going to send that variable back to our PHP page as a post variable. As soon as that happens and this whole event is triggered, that means that this has been set. In PHP, we're saying if it is set, which it is, then we're going to grab that value, which if I selected Ford, then it would be value one. And we're going to turn that into a variable called make. Now we're going to create a variable called get models. We're going to prepare a statement saying select all from models where make ID is equal to something which is ultimately going to be make because we're passing it through. So if we had selected Ford, then make ID would equal one. So whenever it comes back, we're going to say, oh, let's change this actually, select model. While rows is equal to get models, and we're going to fetch that as an associative array. We're going to get the, let's see the ID. Mm, I don't know if that's really important. 
we probably don't need the make ID or the model ID unless we're going to like choose a year or something like that beforehand. So we can get rid of that. Okay, so providing everything is correct here, let me go ahead and refresh the page. I'm hoping that it's not, but we'll see here in just a minute. So if we select Ford, we now see the Ford models. And if we select Chevrolet, we now see the Chevrolet models. So this is actually working exactly like we wanted it to. And I was hoping that I would have a typo in there somewhere. Uh, let's actually make that happen so I can show you how we can debug this. So let's select all for models where we'll just say models one, which is a table that doesn't exist. But what I want to show you is this. If I select Ford and I select model, we're not going to see anything here. But you notice how I have this inspect elements screen over here, which in Google Chrome is just F12. I can drill down here and I can see that, well, there's no errors there. If I look in console, there aren't any errors here. Let's go back in and let's just call this name T and see if we can generate some sort of a SQL error here. Notice whenever I make a selection, it doesn't show me anything here, but it does show me errors in the source code. Or if I had an issue with my JavaScript, let's save that real quick. If I put in like make one and I tried to resubmit this, let's refresh the page. I select Ford, I select model, Nothing's actually happening. I'm looking at my source code. I don't see any errors there. But if I look in console, then I can see that there's actually make one is not defined on line 20. So even though you can't see your errors on the screen, you can still see them within the source code or the console. And those two things are your best friends whenever it comes to fixing your source code. If you're working inside of options, you can't display plain text, which is what those errors are going to come across as. So use that as your debugging mechanism. So let me go ahead and fix this, refresh, and just make sure that this works one more time. So we select the make, I'm gonna choose Chevrolet, and then the select model should choose my template Chevrolet models. So that is the basic understanding of how to populate those dynamic dropdowns. Uh, you can add as many of these as you want. You just need to reference the ID from the dropdown before it. As always, I welcome your questions in the comment section, or if you'd like to reach out to me, I'm on Skype. And if you like my content, you're more than welcome to subscribe. I'll see you next time.